Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be doing an analysis of BZM's Invoker. The reason why I wanted to cover BZM's Invoker here today is there's been a popular build going around and that is Meteor Hammer Invoker. So basically what it starts off with is a kind of wonky looking starting item build. Tango's four branches, an observer ward for the mid lane. From there, he buys boots, which is not something you see every mid laner do. Some mid laners straight up rush the Meteor Hammer. You'll see a crown rush in a lot of cases to just amp up their damage and hit a little bit harder, right? But he ends up going the crown anyway, which I think is a little bit weird to some extent, but we'll get into it during the game. From there, he picks up a Meteor Hammer. After that, he completes his wand, kind of just getting as much value out of the, the branches as possible. From there, he picks up an urn, eventually going vessel. It's a pretty good vessel game, right? They're against an IO, they're against a Death Prophet, so you know, it's a solid Vessel game overall. It, honestly, I'm not a big fan of Vessel as an item though. It's such a bad item where I almost feel like it's part of the reason why I think heal strats are good right now. Once again, another tangent. But yeah, then he goes Witchblade. So kind of a crazy build, right? No BKB in sight, no Midas in sight, no Blink, no Hex, right? Just going for a very odd set of like early game items, a Meteor Hammer to push towers and go for kills, a Vessel to kind of amp that up, then a Witchblade, a late Witchblade at that, right? This is a 23 minute Witchblade, something you rarely see, right? This tends to be an item that you see rushed or not purchased at all. That is obviously not what he does. And then he goes for a Hurricane Pike, a Hurricane Pike on Invoker, right? So we're going to see why this plays out, why this build is good, how he makes it look damn good. And uh, yeah, he ends up finishing this game 11-3. The most impressive, in my opinion, is the 19 assists. Very active in this game, right? Part of 30 of the, uh, I think there's only like, what? Yeah, 37 kills. And let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game League website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. So in terms of the mid lane, it's a pretty even matchup overall. Uh, Razor against Invoker is a little bit annoying because he can sap your damage in the early levels, but he does a good job of using Cold Snap to prevent denies and preventing CS. You can see that in the first wave immediately right here, BZM gets 12 damage sucked, and so right before Amar is able to get this deny, he actually Cold Snaps him to prevent it, uh, which is just such a high skill play, right? I love seeing plays like that, and ends up getting really good damage on Amar as well, kind of just buying time for the 12 damage suck to wear off too. So one quick thing to note about this build is if your lane is hard, you want to go for Ring of Health, but if your lane is easy, you want to pick up Voidstone like he does. When you're going Quas Wex, you're going to have ample HP regen from Quas. It's 9 HP regen when you have all of the Quas orbs active. So picking up something like the Voidstone is obviously a better idea. It seems kind of unnecessary to some extent, and the reason why it might seem unnecessary is because of the fact that EMP drains mana. However, it only drains 50% of the mana. Like, you only get 50% of the mana drained. And if you drain, like, let's say Amar is smart, right? Amar is a smart guy. He definitely is. Hate him or love him, he's a smart guy. And so you'll see he uses Plasma Field before getting hit by the EMP. And this basically means that the EMP is going to do almost no damage, and the Invoker will get almost no mana back from it because it's only burning 31 mana, right? 32. Get the point. So it's a really high skill play from Amar, something most people just wouldn't see. And so that becomes a problem in the pro level when people, I don't want to say outplay, but I guess outplay you in, in a way like this. You really need the Void Stone to make sure you can continue to cast your combo and protect yourself. Now, one thing I found fascinating about BCM's gameplay in this game is that he's not stagnant mid. You would kind of expect if you see a Meteor Hammer purchase from Invoker for him to play like every other Invoker. If you don't know what that means, most Invokers who buy Meteor Hammer, I've been watching a lot of their games, they sit mid and they try to Meteor Hammer their opponent by doing Cold Snap Tornado into Meteor Hammer or just by Meteor Hammering the mid tower off cooldown and trying to take the tower that way. However, BCM kind of sees it a little bit different and you can see even with all of his spells on cooldown, he actually walks top and helps out with a Death Prophet kill. I think a lot of mid lane players undervalue rotating nowadays. I think rotating is kind of the name of the game with mid lane. It, it, it's this happy medium because a lot of people will hear what I just said and they will just rotate off cooldown and have 30 CS at minute 10. And that is certainly horrible. He already has 40 at minute nine, but it's definitely good to kind of sacrifice a little bit of CS if you see that you have a kill side lane. He has a disruptor top, 
This is one of the best heroes to gank his lane, right? Ganking Disruptor's lane is very good because it's very easy for a Disruptor to set up compared to other heroes. Yeah, nice little cool snap onto the DP. Very good. They kill off the Death Prophet. And then he hits a beautiful uh, EMP Tornado on two. And this is huge, right? Because it's going to burn the mana of the, the Razor, kind of neutering him for the next minute or so and getting a big kill onto the Death Prophet. And it's particularly a big kill because it slows down the Death Prophet's goal of the game, which is to take the safe lane tower. She had to use all of her Siphon Charges defensively. That's going to make it very uncomfortable to press Exo until they come back up. From there, he's going to walk back mid and look to Meteor Hammer the tower. He's going to go for the DD, doesn't get it. But for the most part, with this build, you just want to sit mid. You're very tanky because Meteor Hammer gives you eight all stats and Cold Snap is a good defensive ability and so is Tornado and so is Ghost Walk. However, once again, not exactly what you expect from this build. I, like, I mean this, I've seen, I've watched quite a bit of this build. I tend to see the Invoker not rotate too much and put more of the emphasis on taking this tower. And it makes sense. Mid tower is the most valuable tower in the game. It enables smokes. It, it enables the most reliable pressure in the game, which tends to be mid pressure when there's no mid tier one. And so it's very good. But yeah, he's being very active this game. And I think it's partially because Enigma Galaxy's draft is very bad early on. Razor is not that strong at this point in the game, like he can be if you overcommit, but if you're a good player and you disengage when you see him, it's very hard for him to kill you. Typically, we'll see that that's not fully the case. <laughs> Shaker is not good at this point of the game. Io is not good at this point of the game. Drow is not that good. DP is very good. Uh, but yeah, they're going to pressure out the Drow. The Drow is actually having a pretty damn good game, even though he's 0-1. Yeah, he's going to go for the combo. It's very, very simple. When you have four points in Quas, four points in Wax, you just cold snap them, then you tornado them, then you uh, meteor and and because of the fact that cold snap will stun them when they hit the ground it makes the meteor very very reliable right almost no hero can get out of it and so yeah hits it onto the io does a ton of damage onto the io takes a little bit of time to get the kill eventually we'll get the job done to be fair that was a full hp io and he does end up getting run down here so nice response from enigma i did kind of jinx it by saying that they're not good at responding but of course if you commit towards the tier one tower and they bring four heroes they can take him down. And honestly, the reason why this build is so good is Wex Invoker has a massive problem about clearing the creep wave, right? This hero traditionally just cannot kill the creep wave for its life. You don't want to use Tornado if you don't have to, because if you use Tornado on the wave, you can use it if you have to TP in for a kill or if there's just a kill nearby. And yeah, best case scenario, you get to use your Meteor Hammer on the creep wave and the tower. Of course, if the enemy is missing, you don't want to do this, but I like it in this case from BCM because he knows that three heroes are dead and he alacrities the cart, and that's going to secure the tower. Meteor Hammer does way too much damage to towers, in my opinion. Like, it's pretty abusable. Honestly, I think this item is, like, better than people give it credit for. It is somewhat expensive and can have zero impact in team fights, but that's rarely the case with Invoker. But I like his next movement. He kind of understands my team has no tower pressure. Another reason why this Meteor Hammer build is so good. If you're going mid, you have last pick and your team picked a ton of greedy heroes, do Morphling Disrupt their Marcy. Zero tower damage. I mean, Morphling's okay, but not really in the early game, right? He doesn't want to get too aggressive, especially against Drow. But yeah, he's just going to be able to eventually take this bottom tower with, once again, the Alacrity to cart and the Meteor Hammer onto the tower. So it's just a solid play. Like, like Wex Invoker typically just can't do this. And that's why this build is so good and makes so much sense. It seems like a meme, but it just solves the biggest problem of Wex Invoker's kit, which is the wave clear and the tower pressure in the early game. If you can't get kills on the typical Wex Invoker, you just can't do anything because you can't kill neutrals whatsoever. And one thing I like about BZM's gameplay as well is he understands the items that he's buying, right? He buys a vessel. Who does that primarily counter? The Death Prophet. Of course, it's very good against IO too, but in terms of why you would buy a 3k gold item, yes, you can buy it for IO, but in terms of the early game, you often want to buy it for a hero like Death Prophet. And she does not have the Greaves completed. This DP was having a horrible game, unfortunately, like almost no CS for this point of the game. Like mind control was poor, poor, like poor, poor, <laughs> very rough game. And so it's good to pick on these guys, right? You have the Vessel. Part of the reason why I think Vessel is not good is if this DP was having a normal game, it would not be good. She would have a Greaves it just becomes very awkward like you don't want to get your vessel purged then it feels like you have 3k gold wasted but that's not the case here dp hard commits with her exo on the tower they set up with the doom on dm and they pick up a nice little kill probably didn't even need the doom realistically i'm not gonna lie that the doom because there was no greaves was probably highly unnecessary but he picks up a big kill understanding the value of the vessel another cool little thing about meteor hammer is when you're farming the dire jungle you can get a lot of value out of it so this build is definitely a little bit I'm not going to say a lot of it, but a little bit better on Dire because you can drag the camps together, drop the Meteor Hammer and hit both. He actually messed it up a little bit, but you can hit both for sure. So I really love this upcoming movement from BCM and Taiga here. 
they're gonna go for a smoke, and they don't actually have that much information. This is kind of somewhat of a YOLO smoke. Disruptor's ulti is so strong in the first 25 minutes of the game though where you can honestly take a big risk, right? Disruptor is such an A tier at this point of the game. If you just bump into anyone in the daytime, they can't get out. How are you going to run away from Glimpse? You can't, unless you're like very specific heroes like Puck or Ember. Maybe you can get away then. But yeah, Taiga and BZM, they run up the hill. Daytime Disruptor is just such a menace. Uh, ends up not even needing the glimpse in this case, which is kind of good because you can save the glimpse for after, you can also save it for reload. Just very simple combo. Tornado, EMP, apparently with five points in Quas, it's nearly a guaranteed or perfect chain stun with the Meteor Hammer. Not, not exactly, not exactly. Uh, it, with Cold Snap, it's almost perfect. So he didn't Cold Snap here, that would have made it a lot cleaner. But either way, Vessel combo, reducing the IO's heal, very nice. I guess the Drow doesn't have Manta at this point. Yeah, no way, right? So Drow does not have Manta, so the Vessel just getting complete value here, right? Truly reducing the IO's heals, and they allow them to take down the Drow. From there, he does a good job of kiting out. I think a lot of people would make the wrong reaction here and just like YOLO forward, because like Drow's dead, but he sort of chills in the back. I mean, he got hit by a Fisher, but he chills in the back and makes the right read. He goes for the Alacrity. When you see BKBs come out, your best spell on Evoker is Forge Spirits and Alacrity. Forge Spirits are not that good, but Alacrity's the best by far. So yeah, he sees the Razor BKB come out. Instead of panicking and being stupid and trying to cast like Meteor Hammer on some IO that you're definitely not going to hit because there's no real stun here. Instead, he just Alacrity's the Morphling and that takes out the BKB Razor. I see a lot of Invoker players make this mistake. BKBs are used and they're like, I have to use my spells. I have to use my spells. And they just like cast Tornado EMP Deafening Blast. They burn their entire combo, miss because they feel like they have to do something at the beginning of the fight. You don't. You can instead just cold snap, Tornado EMP, force BKBs, big BKBs, drop your vessel, drop your meteor, kind of bait people out, right? Bait out their big BKB and then go for the combo later on into the fight. Like at this point in the fight, it makes a lot more sense. Of course, he's not going to end up really prioritizing it because he's Wex and Volker, but you get the point. As the game progresses, that's definitely something he can look to do as he drops another alacrity. This ability is insane with Morphling. How much attack speed is it at this point? It's 34 damage and 58 attack speed. Just crazy stuff for nine seconds, which feels very, very long. And I'm not going to lie, I, I can't say I fully understand the Witchblade. The armor is really good this game. It's good against DP, Razor, and Drow. Uh, it's definitely a good damage item. Like, don't get me wrong. This item, it lets you hit really hard with Alacrity later on into the game. Your hero has a lot of int, so it gets a lot of value out of the passive, right? This, uh, it, for four seconds, you do 0.75 of your int. And he currently has like 120 int or something like that. That's a lot of damage, right? 90 damage times four, 360 damage. It's actually a ton. So I will admit, maybe this item is just better than I think. Like, especially considering it scales with your int. Not insanely well, but like decently well as, oh, they almost catch him there. It's not bad. It, it definitely makes a good amount of sense. It's just not like a great kiting item. Usually you need BKB or like a Ford staff on this hero. Once again, we're going to see a pretty clean fight from BZM here, at least at the beginning. So once again, I, I just like what he does. He understands the concept of kind of forcing the BKBs in the chilling bit. Drops the tornado. I will admit, I even think he messes up here. I think it's very important that when you see the frontline hero charging forward, you don't like meet them head on. I, I, that's a big mistake players make. I even think BZM makes that mistake here. He kind of like, you don't want to be here. This is, I mean, this is very, thankfully this Earthshaker is not a blink shaker and currently doesn't have Fisher because otherwise this position is like horrible. I don't know if he knows Fisher's on cooldown and that's why he's doing this, maybe, but like, there's no reason to be this far up, right? There really isn't. You're not, you're not the guy killing the Razor. So this is a bit of a positioning issue from BZM for sure. But once again, I like his reaction. He alacrities up the Morphling and that allows Morphling to kill Amar. There's no way the Morphling's killing Amar there on the Razor without that, uh, without that BKB. From there, he knows that the Drow just, I think Drow doesn't have BKB yet. And yeah, and he definitely knows that. And so dropping the Cold Snap Vessel onto the Drow just decimates her health and really reduces that IO healing. So very, very nice as he's going to kite the outside of the fight. Looking for a Sun Strike ends up being a bit of a weird engagement as Doom overextends the Tad and ends up going down. So they kite out and reset. I will say one of the things that I do like about this build is definitely the Hurricane Pike at the end. Even though it seems really weird, it's not like some really good BKB game. It's okay against Shaker, but you know, Shaker can sometimes make BKB useless, so there's that. But Nigma's burst damage is just not that good. It's not, so it's very likely you're gonna get your pike off and be able to kite out. Also, being able to pike Razor is extremely valuable. Being able to pike away at DP, burning Exo, burning Siphon charges is extremely useful. You can even pike people out of tether. I doubt he does that. Like, 
that's super niche and hard to do, but <laughs> it can happen. It's not a it's not a meme. It's really not. It's it's actually not bad piking people out of tether. It's it's quite useful, especially if they're about to get a reload. But all right, and to end off the video, we're gonna see the last fight of the game here from BZM. So he bumps into MCE, and I think he does a good job of just not taking the brunt of the of the gank here. He knew they were smoked, and he did break the smoke, but he didn't want to hard commit in. From there, he does a good job of playing the outside of the fight and really just kind of waiting for an opportunity to go. The Razor ends up getting doomed here. He just got chain stunned when the BKB ended damn. But yeah, the damage from the Invoker here was very impressive. Like, I can really see this Vessel, this Cold Snap, this Witchblading, like, truly taking out this Razor quick. From there, he sees that his Morphling is nearly getting bursted, and maybe that Tornado saved him, because man, Yoragi had no Aegis there. He lived on 1 HP, just barely, eventually gets the Deafening Blast onto the Drow, preventing any opportunity from turning. Sunstrike, kind of looking for the DP on the end there, but... Not getting it off sunstrike is not a good spell to make in almost every case in these team fights like as i said best case scenario you're poking bkbs at the beginning with your cold snap with your tornado with your emp and your and your vessel then from there you're looking for alacrity and then from there when the bkbs have been used you're looking for cold snap again with tornado but then including that meteor and including that uh deafening blast and maybe even meteor hammer later on into the fights too it's not bad it's quite a bit of a chain stun but all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned quite a bit from BCM's Invoker. I definitely enjoyed watching his gameplay, and I'm a big fan of this build. I think the Meteor Hammer, while it seems like a meme to a lot of us because it's just such a bizarre item, it is very good on some heroes, and it enables this Wex Invoker to have a way to push out creep waves and threaten the mid tower, something it just truly couldn't do. It was a very, like, limited hero, and honestly, that was part of the reason why I think almost no Invoker has been picked by a lot of pro teams for, like, a while now, besides a very, like, some teams pick it like storm stormer has been picking it but he was almost solely exhort for a long time so yeah thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one and i'm out peace and that's all but remember before you leave come on before you tune out subscribe to the game leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank if you're stuck click the link down below and i'm out peace